Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Gritty Astro, speaking from, transmitting from, broadcasting from South America. Yes, very, very far away from the English-speaking population in the world. About uh, 4,000 or 6,000, actually, I, I don't know, I, I don't remember, kilometers from UK. And how many more? or less from the US and like a <laughs> like a thousands of kilometer, kilometers from Australia I have family in Australia and I have some friends in the UK and I have some yes people who I used to know and I have you know uh, my tarot teacher or my tarot Yes, teacher, master, uh, she's from um, the U.S. <clears throat> so, yes, I mean, I know people from U.K., U.S., and Australia. In Australia, I, I have family. But anyway, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, here it's about 5 p.m., it's a rainy afternoon, late afternoon. It's very uh, gothic. You know, I can hear the little drops of rain, of quiet rain, drumming on my ceiling, on my office ceiling. You know, it's a very quiet rain. It's not a heavy rain. The sky is overcast. Everything is quiet. Everything is in silence, so it's a perfect uh, time uh, for me to do a little podcast. Um, I have a little time right now on this Sunday. So, <clears throat> I mean, hello everybody. I want, first of all, thank you for all the messages, all the emails, and the new subscribers. Um, I mean, a nice dialogue has emerged, okay? Um, there, I, I ne never thought that people would be interest, really interested, like actually interested in what I'm, I'm my points of view, uh, because, you know, in my experience, um, from what experience I, I have had here or anywhere really, people tend to like shy away from <clears throat> from the lesser trodden path. It's like people just accept the official narrative of life, of anything, of any event given or your life. It's like we tend to, we tend to accept the given narrative, the official story of the facts. I mean, it's not about the truth, it's about the official narrative of something, okay? And even in our own life, we tend to give ourselves an official story of who we are. We tend to overlook our bad traits, or we tend to uh, over overhype those bad traits or we tend to downplay our good traits uh, or people who are narcissists they tend to overplay um, or like overestimate their own talents their own uh, sense of super superiority and I mean it's a very human thing to do some some of the things can be, um, you know, like narcissists. It can be like um, mental distortion. But we all suffer from mental distortions. I mean, even the most uh, um, rational, <laughs> quote unquote, rational minds, they have their own story that they they make themselves about. You know, that they make about themselves. Sorry. Um, I construct the, the sentences in Spanish and then I have to translate them like in a millisecond in English so sometimes the construction of my sentences is wrong and I'm sorry 
apologies. Um, but like I said before, English is not my first language. Spanish is. So I, I tend, I construct sentences in in another language, and then I have to, in my mind, you know, translate them immediately to English. So, yes, so we tend to, it's a very human thing, um, normal thing, actually, to tend to over overestimate or underestimate, you know, our good traits and bad traits and vice versa, you know. We tend to tell ourselves stories about who we are. That's a fact. No rational person or portraying themselves to be rational can say, oh, no, no, I do not make stories about myself. That is untrue. You make stories about who you are every day of your life. I do it. We all do it. It's a human thing. It's a trick of the mind to survive, to, it's, you know, it's the stuff, <laughs> it's the stuff of what dreams are made. <laughs> oh my God, Emma came to my mind. It's weird, um, in this dreary day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, we all tend to make stories about ourselves and about other people we project and you know and we, we have stories about what, what reality is even though there is one kind of reality in which most of us agree upon yes there's that's for me it's the reality of the senses uh, in which you know we all sense the same things you know it's like oh there's the sun oh you know it's raining oh you know i'm hungry oh yeah that color is green unless you are you have unless you have that you know eye illness you know uh how is it called that like you see the green as it's very <laughs> dangerous because you're in you know on the street lights and you see the the red light and you see that's the green and you see the green as the red you know um, I used to know someone who had that um, eye distortion, uh, sight distortion. Um, I don't know exactly how you say it in English. Uh, but yeah, it's like there's a reality that we all agree upon. Like that's the reality. The only reality that we can all agree upon is the reality of the senses. Okay, yes. Um, this smells like that. Yeah, I mean, you are in a pile, if like 10 people from all over the world, like meet in a place where there's, there is a rotten piece of thing, you know, a rotten meat or whatever, and it smells horrible, horrible, they will all say, yes, this smells like death. This smells like, like really bad. This is dangerous. It's like your red flags will go up. Even if your red flags don't go up because you work as a forensic expert, you will know that that smell is bad, that's death, that's the composition, okay? And if 100 random people from all over the world meet and say, oh, that music is Mozart, yes, that's him, that's Mozart, right? Because he did it, he composed the music, as far as we know, we all know his music, it's beautiful music, it's Mozart or the Beatles or whoever. Or, um, or for example, uh, a train passes by and a hundred people, random people from all over the world will say, oh, what is that? Some people will say, that's a train. The majority of people today will say, that's a train. That sounds like a train, right? Or we gather a hundred random people from all over the world and there is a storm and there is thunder, and every one of them will hear the thunder, right? We all agree upon what we see with our own eyes, what we have been trained to see in the reality, what we have been, like, our noses have been trained to smell, what we have been trained to touch, uh, and what's the other one? Oh, dear, and to hear. <laughs> oh, God. So, yes, um... You know, bear in mind that this, this is a Sunday evening, so, you know, 
I'm not the most sharp. <laughs> um, here in South America, we have this thing that on Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays, we call it uh, the pub. It's like, you know, we have the meal with the family and we all laugh and choke and, you know, but we also, we also drink wine, yes, uh, or beer. I'm not a huge drinker. Uh, I'm not like, ooh, Nicola. Oh, she was such a big drinker, which I think is Pollock's. Uh, she was a normal drinker, I think. And like everybody at our age, you know, we love having a nice time. We love having a drink and having a laugh. I think everybody loves that. But anyway, um, here, the you know, weekends here, it's a family thing. And it's like, you know, there's wine, there's beer, and it's a, like a social thing. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we tend to be a little bit tipsy or, you know, like seasoned. You know, I'm, I'm not tipsy or anything, but, you know, I have had today some glasses of rich, beautiful red wine. Yes. So, sorry if I'm not the sharpest. Um, I mean, I'm not very sharp anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the reality... Me, I, I wanted to talk about, first of all, you know, like, hello, everyone. You know, thank you for the thoughts, the messages, the subscriptions, um, the emails. Thank you. I mean, I want to send a special thanks to Martin. Uh, we have been corresponding uh, via email and he has told me like very interesting things and he's a sweet soul and he understands he really understands where I come where I'm coming from he has the same kind of perception as I do and many of you who have left comments uh, here um, have like you understand where I'm coming from and I understand people who who have a different way of thinking about this case about life in general, about how the world, what is the world, what is reality, how we perceive reality. It's like, it's like my kind of people. It's like because, you know, the official narrative, like the rational narrative, we all know about that. We all know, know the official narrative of the Nicola Bulli case about of anything, of any case of any occurrence in life. We know the official narrative. That is the narrative that is presented to us by the authorities or by the um, the people, the experts, whatever. In this case, <clears throat> the reality of this case, the narrative of this case has been presented by the police and the government, well, the police actually Yes, yeah, so I was interrupted by life. Uh, bless. Yes, so um, always, um, especially in these times, in these modern times, you know, the official stories presented to us by the authorities, like by the government, the police, the church, whoever. I mean, the people who are in charge, the people who are... Uh, elected or, I don't know, or, you know, by the people who have uh, lots and lots and lots of power in society. So they are the ones who are able to pass down these narratives, okay? So when the police, and with, with all due respect to the police, it's not like I am against police, I'm not. But I have seen uh, that police has lost the confidence, confidence of the public for some years now, for some time now, in the first world. I mean, not to speak here in the third world. I mean, police never had the trust of the public. You can imagine why. But in the first world, at least in you know, Europe, US, you know, there is a obvious decline of the interest of the sorry of the faith of the public uh, in the police so why is that i mean why is that happening well maybe because 
it is happening. Maybe because the police uh, that have been cut down economically, they have been uh, reduced. The costs have been reduced to the bone. That could be a possibility. Also, uh, because there is an obvious recession in the economy worldwide, worldwide, um, obviously the government is going to cut down anything they can get the, their hands on. Okay, they are going to cut the police resources. They are going to cut the public services resources, so everything is going to be cut down, and that is um, very, very dangerous, and that is why the police, you know, when you cut down the resources in police, um, they become dangerously more um, liable or more capable of being corrupt, you know, that's the problem. That's one of the problems, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all seeing, you know, also from my point of view here, like here, like <clears throat> resources here, public resources are always like cut, uh, overcut, and, you know, people in South America do not have enough services or good quality services. Um, but yes, in the first world, it's happening. It's happening a lot. And when something like the police, something as important as the police, which is a body, independent body, who has a lot of power because they have the law in their hands, you know, they can arrest you if you don't want. They can just come at your house at 3 a.m. and just bring down your door and do whatever they want, basically. You know, if you undercut, you, you, you underfund the police, you are making the police dangerous because they can they are more liable to become criminals like they are more liable to become um, like uh, how you say when they are receive money from a third party not to act or to act against somebody um, it, that a bribe they are more susceptible to bribes from outer parties right they are more susceptible to inner corruption and out outer corruption, you know? So that, th I think that's what, what's happening in this case, and in many cases, what happened is that the police is becoming more brutal and more stupid, and um, because they are undercut, they're underpaid, you know? Uh, they are not given the, the maybe the, all the resources they need, or they are not given like all the overtime that they work or whatever and if you add to that if you add the corruption that it's you know in every government uh nowadays i mean come on it's like where big corporation corp corporations have a hand are poking into the government's business into the you know they have interest in the public facilities, in the public services. When you let like these big corporations into the public arena, it becomes dangerous because from, from my experience here in South America, these big corporations, what they want is just to squeeze everyone, everything out of, out of their last penny to make more money and to have more control. I mean, these like huge corporations, they are, they are, they are <laughs> not your, your granny. They are actual, you know, they are sharks, you know, they are like a mafia. And they will, they, they, they will, they, they're, they're started like to have their interests to, you know, in, into the public stuff. Uh, public services, you know, education. It has happened here, okay? So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it's happening there. I mean, come on, people, you know? We are living in globalism now, so we, we know everything, you know? We know absolutely everything. Um, at least, uh, is this, all this is my opinion, okay? Um, from where I am, um, 
you know, the, the, the modern, the, the, the first world, sorry, the western world is in total decline. It's a decline of the western world, okay? And I think one of the things is because the governments <clears throat> have given the big companies too much leeway, okay? So they have uh, trickled into, they have made their way into the government, into the public services, like, for example, um, public health, schools like education, and police, and the system of justice. Um, I mean, here in South America, there are always, always cases of like dirty churches, or for example, churches where when they are not dirty, they are like like uh, they are replaced by other churches who will accept their money. So it's like I think that that what's happened here for decades is what is happening now more overtly in the first world, in the first world, the Western world, like Europe, uh, United States, Australia, all of that, okay? So, you know, I see it from my perspective, from where I am, you know? And uh, I think that's what's happening, like, the greed, the greed, you know, of the governments, of the politicians, of people, you know? The greed is the what, you know, made everything possible for these huge corporations and the, these huge mafias who have, now they have the, their, you know, the, they have their hands over, you know, someone, something as important and critical as the police force. So, that's just my opinion. It's just based on what I gather, okay? Uh, so, I'm not really surprised that, you know, that the police is inefficient or they, they appear to be um, indifferent or they are simply, uh, like, really bad at their jobs, you know. This investigation of the Nicola Bulli case, from my perspective, the police have made a botched job. It's like a real, they just got it. I think that there are many, um, like, there are many prongs into this case because that is what makes this case so fascinating. Sorry, so uh, fascinating is that it's multi-pronged. It's just not one thing. Uh, the police have been incompetent because I think they are underfunded, but also because they are being manipulated from a higher up. I think there's a connection somewhere. I have my theories that uh, some, someone, someone higher up the police, it's just stopping this investigation. It's just, uh, just making it like harder, putting block, blocks into investigation. Why didn't they investigate some like critical avenues, you know, like the, oh, sorry, uh, so like the, um, Rowan Water was it? I mean, they could have held Nicola there, underwater, and then just put there by the um, lay-by later when the police stopped looking. Uh, they, the police didn't search that area. Why? I mean, wh when you're searching... Okay, I get it. It wasn't a criminal thing, but why not? I mean, it should have been. It should have been... Like, uh, it should have been, I mean, it should have been like, okay, like it is, it is a missing person, but they should have treated it as a crime, as a potentially criminal case, especially, especially with all the history there is with Paul and all the calls to the police in that area and the call to the police, the welfare check on the 10th of January, and if you look at the crime maps, all the calls to the police, all the crimes that have been committed 
In that particular uh, particular area, in Inskip, I mean, come on. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to come up with these conclusions. So having the huge red flag of what happened, the potential uh, domestic violence with Paul, okay? I mean, why wouldn't you treat this as a potential criminal case? Why didn't you just search all the places? Why didn't you, uh, like, um, I mean, where the phone was found? I mean, they just gave it to Paul. They shouldn't have done that. I mean, it should have been take it, taken as a, you know, a, a criminal matter, like um, suspicious. There, there should have been suspicious eyes over all of this mess. Okay? And if you have then the Peter, Peter Folding, who, who is an expert, I mean, and he said that it, it's very unlikely that, that she was in that river, and then, then they just, you know, they doxed him. I mean, the police... The, the, the establishment doxed this guy. Yes? That's what I think. They doxed him. There was the scapegoat. But not only that, they, they doxed him. It's like, this guy is no good. And this was the guy, the expert, the expert who said that she, it wasn't likely that she was there, that Nicola was there in the river at all. Because they and the police have searched it extensively and they have searched they have searched where, where, where Nicola was found eventually and there was nothing there so you know it's a huge red flag and the police instead of owning up and saying okay we're going to investigate more no no they're never going to do that because that's not the way the police works there the police never uh, as far as I am concerned, the police never, ever owns up to a mistake. They never apologize. And when they do is this, like, corporate uh, message, you know, like, you know, really cold, really detached. They put, like, a, someone, like a Mr. X or Mrs. X, someone who is, they look like an NPC or, you know, they, they just a corporate suit. They put a corporate suit who is just a talking head and they just blah 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 they repeat an empty statement from a piece of paper you know it's so sad it's so pathetic what the police have come to I mean the police used to be you know a great force I mean they used to be much better I think although the, there were horrible cases where they, there was a horrible injustice, like the case of this oh, African-American boy in the 90s. In London, was it um, Lawrence? Stephen Lawrence? Am I right? Am I wrong? Um, I remember that case. Um, I saw the true crime uh, documentary about him, about this magnificent cold case uh, expert, forensic experts, from the UK who um, reinvestigated, reopened this case, and they finally could, you know, catch the killers and convict them, you know. And the police was awful, but that was another case because the police in those times there were, used to be like real racist and like real bad in that in that aspect, you know. Uh, but now they're just incompetent. They're just, they don't care. It's like they don't, they're just suits. I mean, I have seen this, um, <laughs> some, I mean, just a couple of videos from this guy who, it's called, uh, Audit, Audit UK or something, when he goes to different, uh, nicks and he confronts police people. <laughs> he just stands there in the, at the gates of the police station. And he just um, <laughs> records, and you no, know, many people just start being, you know, very unsavory to him. And he's just there, you know, not doing anything. And the police are very arrogant. It's like they are superior to you, you know. It's like, what are you doing here? 
you have no right to be here, you know, and he's just not doing anything. And some, some of the police just are real, like, they're bullies. And what I like about that program is that he exposes uh, the arrogance and the corruption. I mean, the potential corruption like, is like the, this very uh, inappropriate behavior of the police, random, towards a random, random citizen just standing there, you know. Uh, it's very worrying. It, for me, it screams of, um, how you say, um, of omnipotence, like uh, corruption, because when it's like when you have this power and you are just another corporate corrupted suit, you know, and you don't give a fuck about anything, just getting your salary and your benefits and fuck them all, you know, I don't care. Who cares? I mean, I mean, my sergeant and my lieutenant are just, you know, they are playing poker with this politician and that one, and then they are all in cahoots. So, you know, it's like, that's how corruption works. It starts from the way up to down. That it is literally impossible to have a corrupt police if the higher ups are clean. When you have a corrupt, incompetent, arrogant police, what you see in our, you know, the lowest ranks, like the PC, the constables, and but why are they acting like that? Uh, what do you see, like the sergeant or the lieutenant, that the one Becky Smith and the other who spoke on TV about the case, and they sounded like. You know, especially the later one, uh, the latter one was horrible, like Becky Smith or something. Uh, she she was like a corporate suit. She looked like a corporate suit, and she was. It's like she was had. She looked like um, um, <laughs> Professor Data or something. She was like a robot. No emotion, no empathy for anyone, and and just crushing down, you know, the social media, like, we are the culprits, we are right, we are the I mean, we, we who are really interested in this case and who really feel for, for the girls, you know, of Nicola, we are the ones who are bad, eh? Yeah, right, like, I haven't heard that before, I mean, I have heard it before many times, you know, oh, yes, you, the public, are the culprits, yeah, right, sure. Make me laugh more. So these corporate suits uh, who took over the case of Nicola um, after the other, obviously the other one, the first one, I don't remember her name, uh, obviously she wasn't good enough for them. Maybe it was more that, than she could chew, so they put these two corporates, you know, corporate suits, you know, oh yes, and so arrogant and like so cut off from the public, you know, so detached. And you know, that's for me, that's screams of incompetence, of corruption, of omnipo a sense of being omnipotent, like nobody can touch you. That's mafia, you know, when you feel, when you see someone who, see, it's like nobody can touch me, you know, in, in, the, in, in the police or in, um, in the government, right? It's like, you know, this guy is corrupt because you cannot be acting like that. Like, nobody can touch you. Like, if you were like Don Corleone, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so, you know, and that's the people who feed us the reality, like the official narrative. Just, you know, now I'm talking about the Nicola Bully case, but this can be applied to any public, uh, any occurrence in the public, okay, in the public interest. Um, yeah, th that's how, that's what I perceive, you know, these corporate suits, these cold suits, detached, looking down on the public, which is so so inappropriate, so unprofessional, 
There's no more professionalism and love for the job in the police. And I'm not saying all the police are like that, but when you when you see corruption, when you see bad attitudes in the lower ranks, it's because the higher ranks are the ones who are who started the corruption, because it's the only way possible. So you know, um, to put an example, I was I was um, really I was like what when Curtis Media. Um, was arrested, and I'm not going to touch on his past or whatever, his motives. Uh, I'm not interested in that. I mean, that's for you to this. I mean, just think for yourself, okay? But, you know, I was... I mean, I was horrified that the police went into his uh, granny's house, like at three in the morning or like was it like one in the morning one thirty in the morning I mean I, and I thought okay oh hold on a moment it reminds me of when we have here when in the 70s here in South America we have the, the dictatorship you know when like this police or like pseudo police like would crash into your house you know and take everybody out at three four in the morning you know and you would be detained like in a Guantanamo the like place and you were tortured and killed, you know, and, and, and disappeared. That was in the 70s here, okay, guys? It reminded me of those kind of police who just... I mean, really? Was it warranted? I mean, did they really need to do that? I don't think so. They didn't need to crash into his house, into his gra granddad's house at 2 in the morning, making all that ruckus, all that drama, all that violence, you know, it's like, it was a very violent situation, like, for their grandparents, for his grandparents, and they made him wait in the uh, police van for, like, three hours while, while they searched uh, the, the house with the old people there, you know, the seniors. I mean, who does that? Why? Because he just filmed something? Really? I mean, it's like I'm living in a fascist world. It's like the 70s here, you know, dictatorship. It's like, who are we under? Who are you guys under? Who is go governing you? I mean, how is the police? I can't believe the police in UK would do that. Like, they acted like thugs. They acted like paramilitary police, like the ones who here, you know, break into the gangs at night and they arrest everyone and they, they discover the drugs and, but they have like a probable cause to do that but he, but in UK, I mean, this guy had just, what did he do? He was just, he filmed that, supposedly because it, for me, I saw the video the first, the first day he uploaded it and I didn't see anything like, like nasty uh, uh, even furthermore, I didn't think that was a body. I mean, that was my first perception. It was, what are they doing there? I mean, what is that? I mean, what? They were lifting up something, but it, it didn't look like a body. It was. It looked like a dinghy, you know, like a um, how you say, like a, a inflatable dinghy, and it, it was deflated, and they were just loading it up, and it didn't look like a body. And was it was that the body? I, I didn't. I mean, it didn't seem to me. I didn't think that was the body. I'm sorry. Uh, if that's what I mean, that's what I saw from Curtis Media. Those times ago, when he posted that infamous video, I thought, "What is this? This doesn't look like a body." I mean, it wasn't something so horrible. I mean, was it in poor taste? Yeah, maybe. But was it like? <laughs> <laughs> Did the police need to act like thugs, like paramilitary, and break into his house, into his granddad's house at two in the morning, and make all this show just because he videoed something, and just because he went filming into St. Michael's on the wire? Yes, yeah, sure, he he is cheeky. 
Yeah, sure. He ruffled a few feathers. Yeah. But he didn't do anything like um, horrible, like, oh, I'm breaking into this house. I'm going in the house, you know. I'm harassing people. He, he never harassed anyone, as far as I can see. He was cheeky in that he, like, you know, approached people, like in the caravan, when he spoke to that old guy. And then, you know, I mean, he, he, yes, he was cheeky, but, you know, he didn't commit a crime. I mean, he didn't, like, I don't think he, he trespassed, because I don't think... As far as I can, as far as I know, that's not, uh, it's not like a private land or the, the path that goes uh, through that caravan park, uh, it's a public path. That's what I'm thinking. So, I mean, it didn't warrant the police to be so thuggish. I was sincerely very surprised because it took me back to the 70s. You know, I was very little in the 70s, but in the 70s here was really dark. You know, the paramilitary police, you know, the dictatorships, it just reminded me of that dark face in my country, you know, actually in all of South America and Central America. So, yeah, it's like, what? That's another huge, huge red flag for me. The way the police acted, they acted like a paramilitary, they acted like a mafia. They didn't act like police, okay, in a minor thing. That was a minor case for this guy, you know, this Curtis Media. Even if, because he has previous, maybe be, because I, 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 I can understand that because he had previous conviction with a he was in prison right maybe that that is because the, maybe the, the police said okay I'm, we're going to teach him a lesson and we're going to give uh, I think he was like another uh, scapegoat because they, they thought oh yeah this guy has previous so yeah I mean let's just break into his house like two in the morning you know uh, like if we are the mafia you know and you know, because and let's give let's, let let's make him an example to the other internet. What 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 was the name they used? The internet ghouls. I mean, come on, ghouls. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. This is like flagrant, flagrant. Um, like a, it's a flagrant, um, like a anti-freedom attitude. It's like a anti-freedom. It's like they do not want people, like from the public, to look into these cases ourselves, and this case especially. Why this case? Why the Nicola Bully case? Is it because they had they had an agenda, and they okay they picked this case because this case got the attention of thousands and thousands millions maybe of people, and they say okay we're going to take this case and make it you know an example. Are they uh, planning on uh, restricting the liberties, the freedoms of speech, of uh, movement in the people? I don't know. It could be. It wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. Uh, or maybe this case is special. It's truly special. Maybe in this case there are higher apps who are involved in it. For some reason I have theories. I'm not talking about them yet because I have to think them through. I have to say, okay, how do I say this? Because in this day and age, it's like you can't just say anything because if I allude to one of my theories in which it would make sense why this case is so special and if they are so protected, why are the police protecting this, this case so much? Why so hush-hush? It's because my logical conclusion is because there are higher apps who are involved in some way. 
and these higher ups want this case like shut down, completed, and they do not want people poking into it. There's a can of worms here, I'm sure, and these higher ups do not want that can of worms to be opened because if that can of worms is opened, many people will be exposed and they want they want like they won't permit that they won't go near that that is why they made scapegoats of peter folding so oh how do you dare you're a chi i mean you you're a, an expert how dare you question the police narrative how dare you give just your opinion as an expert which is what he did from my my perception that was he did he just he was like I think he was Peter Folding he was um, really baffled and with reason and he was doxxed by the establishment and then we have Curtis media which it doesn't matter if you like him or not I don't think it has nothing to do with his past what he, I think the police what they did the government I mean the the the, the what I think is that the establishment had Curtis made another scapegoat for us. Peter Folding was for all the other possible potential experts who you know, don't talk about this, don't 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 question the narrative. You know, Peter Folding was so the public only trusts in the police and not in the experts, in the in the independent experts. I mean, that's really bad. That's really dirty. They did the dirty on Peter Folding. They really did him wrong. And then what they did was um, they had their, their scapegoat. They made Curtis Media an scapegoat too. I don't care what people say about him. If he's dodgy, if he isn't, that's not the point. That has nothing to do with how they made him a uh, scapegoat so nobody would poke into the Nicola Bulli case. Oh yes, go and maybe poke into other cases that, you know, with other people who don't matter to us, you know, but not with the Nicola Bulli case. Why? Because she, her case, her death, her disappearance, some higher ups or someone who has who is involved with the higher ups was involved with her with her death there is something there some like dark activity some i don't know the nature is i have my theories of what these activities are um, but you know let's say they are not uh, legal okay they are not savory so it's like a corruption and it's the corruption I was talking before. It's like when there is corruption in the higher ups, in the government, in the public health, in the uh, justice system, in the police, when there's corruption in the higher ups, it will be corruption all down the line. That's how corruption works. It's impossible when, you know, if some there are some dirty minor cops you know, they're going to be taken out of the force, you know. But when the force is the one that, like, doesn't work, it's incompetent, it's all covered up, it's like all hush-hush, it's all scapegoats, then you have to think, oh, yes, this is not just some uh, little village PCs, you know constables this is higher ups because you know there's no way just this little nick in St. Michael's is going to make this huge operation and not bring any results because they haven't brought any results in the Nicola Bulli case the Nicola Bulli case is a scandal it's a shame it's just it's such a I mean I don't know what happened there, but something happened that um, someone someone higher up is involved in some way, and oh God, um, 
I don't think it's, it's, I mean there are many theories that I have um, that is why I don't like to just accuse anyone directly because I mean uh, there are people who, who accuse Paul of murdering her because Paul wanted to be with Emma and I, I'm sorry I just I, I, I couldn't speak like that because I mean, first of all, when you accuse somebody of something in such an obvious way, I mean, you don't have any evidence, do you? You don't really know what happened because there are many other dodgy characters in this play and they are e as equally as bad as Paul could ever be. So why are you latching just on Paul? He could have done it, yes, of course. He's one possible avenue, but how? I mean, you, you can't just go accusing people of murder, even if you think he did it. That, oh, that's okay, I mean, it's okay if you think he did it, but to blatantly accuse somebody online, in public, for millions of people to see, accusing someone who has children, accusing him of, yes, you did murder her. Is like, and then and then make fun of him. It's just like, like day after day after day. It's, I, 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 it doesn't sit well with me. I don't think it's. I don't think it's it's right. I don't think it's ethical. Um, I'm sorry. I don't think it's the way to go. I think uh, people who do that, who just like publicly uh, just, you know, make fun, make entertainment and money out of someone who they picked on, like they're bullying Paul and they're bullying this one and that, and and, and that's wrong. That's just plain wrong. Not, not just, not because you're wrong, wrong. I mean, it's not because you're wrong. I mean, you potentially could be right. Potentially, you do not have any evidence you just have conjecture is what you have like all of us okay so by you people going out and just accusing people I mean it's not that you can't do it apparently you can it's just that it's, it's just unethical it's it's bad it's not good for your soul to make money out of accusing and bullying somebody, you know. And I'm, so, I'm not saying that Paul is innocent. I just, I have the feeling that, you know, in, in all the, the, the theories I have, he is in one of them, and he is in more than one of them. Because I have many theories of what happened there, many characters involved. Uh, some theories have him, Paul, in just, okay, one theory, but he is he's never alone he's always for me with other people okay if he had anything to do with her disappearance and her death okay all I'm saying is I just want to put my perceptions out there but I do not want to say just latch on this one person and say he murdered he murdered her he murdered her he killed her you know no no, I can't do that. I can't. I cannot. I mean, my conscience won't let me do that. So, you know, that, that that's anybody's guess. So, anyway. I mean, that's another <laughs> rabbit hole, so to, so to speak, you know. I could. That's another theme, you know, another topic. People who are like, um, I don't know, like sharks and just latch on the opportunity and just exploit it to no end and they, they are they are in just for I think they are in just for the money and for the attention I think they are media whores media whores who love the attention that is they are just I mean obviously for them to do that either they are narcissists or they have uh, no values, no ethics, or 
Well, that, that comes with being a shark, right? Or they, and probably they have low self-esteem as well. Uh, just to go out there and exploit something, a person, you're exploiting someone, someone's character. It's someone who has children, small children. And, I mean, it's okay to have suspicions and say, okay, maybe he did it because this and that and that, you know, but to, to exploit that topic over and over and over again just for views, just for money, just for the infamity or just for the, you know, the attention is like, it's so, so sad, you know, it's very sad. And I hope, I wish people didn't do that. But, because, you know, I am a mother and... Mm. I just, I cannot bear, you know, the thought of those children just being, like, further harmed, you know, by all these horrible accusations, like, vicious accusations, time and time again, you know, time after time, just to exploit it for money, you know, and for attention, it's sad. And I'm surprised that people don't see through that, you know. It's like, I'm really surprised that people like that, you know. Mm. I mean, it, I admit that it can be entertaining, those, those type of programs. These people can be entertaining, yes, but there comes a time when it's like, yeah, no, no, thank you. Um, uh, I'm going away. I'm just... This is like not right, uh, you know, it doesn't feel right, you know, and I admit, you know, I have had this like, um, like total wild thoughts about, you know, what Paul did and, you know, and Paul and Emma, because they make good comedy, okay, they, they are the main, main niche, they're, I mean, they are, Paul and Emma, they are the main obvious characters in this play okay and I call it a play just for my sake you know because I'm seeing it as I'm seeing it as this Agatha Christie uh, mystery because it, it, it's like you know like a Mr. Poirot uh, mystery when he has there are so many equally suspects suspicious people and he has to sift through like so patiently, all the evidence, all the clues, you know, and come to the conclusion, you are the murderer. But there were all, many other people who were equally as suspicious, and they had motive, and they had means, and they had the means, motive, and, oh, I don't remember what was the third one. Anyway, but it's like a Poirot. <laughs> Uh, mystery, you know, many suspects, and they are the main suspects, Emma and Paul, which, just let me say this, what if they are a red herring? What if they are a red herring, the Paul and Emma characters? They could have done it, yes, they could be involved, yes, it's, it's possible, I mean, Anything is possible uh, if you're open-minded enough. Uh, yes, but they are, the, they are the main obvious suspects. You know, if you were to pick up suspects, you know, Paul and Emma are the obvious ones. They are dodgy as hell, yes. They didn't come right in, the, in their interviews. They're really dodgy. I mean, I have this notepad full, full of keywords like subliminal keywords, you know, that take me to subliminal meanings with Paul, with his both of his interviews, and Emma, many, many suspicious keywords. But then you have other possibilities, you know. Like I said, like criminal entities, corruption, higher-ups. All you have to do is look a bit further further into it. And, you know, you can reach 
the same conclusions and I mean it's not like like it's just Paul and Emma, you know. There are other shady characters here. There are other and you know, maybe they are all involved, like all these main characters, like shady characters in this play, maybe they are invo all involved in this. It's it is possible, yes. And then some people say it's a it's a psyop and I have to admit I love um, conspiracy, conspiracy theorists, not all of them, definitely not all of them, but, you know, I like the way they think out of the box as well. But, you know, the PSYOP element, it's very interesting. Um, somebody said that, oh no, it's not a PSYOP, because for a PSYOP to be all of them, all of the village all of the police force, all of the family, all of everybody, everybody will have to be in on it. And I say, no, no, not everybody. No, no. In a PSYOP, not everyone has to be in on it. You need just a few key actors, you know, and you, you need just a few corrupt police higher-ups, you know, or medium things, you know, medium ranks. You, need, you, you, don't, you really don't need much to make a PSYOP. I mean, come on. People are duped daily by the media, by the all the shit posted on Twitter. You know, people are always believing all that shit. I mean, you think you really think that a psyop is that like hard to do? Come on. All you need is just a few connections in the higher ups, you know, in the political world, in the media world, in the police force, and you know, that's it. I mean, for example, if uh, if you are you are a government asshole, you know, and and you are in cahoots with a asshole corporation who wants to manipulate the people, so they are not uh, like. A, so if if you want to uh, restrict the free freedom of speech, right? So to control the population. Uh, because in the world, in the world of media, social media today, everybody's talking. So maybe they want to, let's say, let, they want to. This huge corporation who has lots and lots of power, it's in cahoots with this government or this part of the government. Not all the, of the government has to be in on it. Just a section of the government, right? And they are in cahoots, and they are corrupt, utterly corrupt. And this corporation comes and says, okay, there's a lot of money in it for you if you do this for me, okay? We want to uh, manipulate, we want to restrict the freedom of speech, we want to divert uh, the, um, the opinions of the public, and we want them to be afraid, we want them uh, to think that the police can just imprison them if they, are, they say the wrong thing, if they say what they think. That we want to, we want to feel like people, like feel. I want, we want people to make. We want them to make them fearful of us. We want them to be manipulated by us. Okay. We want to gaslight them. Okay. We want them to buy our products. We want them to follow us. You know our deathly music. We, we, they are the sheep or the rats, and they have to follow us. We want them to follow us. Our lead, not the truth. So, you know, they're going to get in cahoots with some politician, someone higher up, you know, who has, connect, who has some connections, and, you know, it's very easy to do. You know, we, they, let's create something, okay? Let's create an event, a public event, and let's make this uh, investigation by the police. The majority of the police will not know this is a, a PSYOP, it's ridiculous. I mean, just someone, so just this connection in the police force needs to know that this is not real and we're going to plant, we're going to make up all this, uh, all this story, all this play. This person is going to disappear. There are, here are the main characters and not all of them need to be involved, not even Paul. If this was a PSYOP, it could be a PSYOP to manipulate the people's opinion, to dox people into oblivion. So people are fearful to speak. It would be very easy to do a PSYOP. It's not difficult, and especially not in these times where 
they have all of the technology at their disposal. They have the best of the best at their disposal. At these corporations have everything they want at their disposal, and if they want to, like, um, if they want the public to shift their thinking and to be fearful of the government and the police and to keep the toe, you know, toe the line, you know, <laughs> it's very easy to, to, to create a, a PSYOP. I'm sorry, but for me, it will be very easy. If you have one or two higher-ups in police with a medium in police, with a medium rank, and then you have this uh, higher-up-ish um, person, a politician in government, and then you have this connection in the media, who is also corrupt. Uh, it's very easy, it's not that difficult, and all you need is just a couple of, some actors, you know, to make the thing, you know. It's not that difficult. I mean, it's not like, ooh, it's impossible. And speaking about PSYOPs, what about the PSYOP, I mean, of the Truman Show? I mean, if that wasn't the biggest um, fictional PSYOP ever, well, I mean, you have, yeah, um, 1984, of course, and Brave New World, and all of that, and many, many more, but in terms of, like, um, TV, you know, what people really, really... The majority of people watch TV, watch movies, watch Netflix. They're not reading 1984, right? They're watching Netflix, they're watching the, you know, uh, TV. And, you know, the biggest psyop, fictional psyop, is the Truman Show. Um, and that, it's interesting because it's Paul who mentions... The Truman Show, when, I mean, Dan Walker asked ask him, uh, how do you feel or something like that? And he says, I feel like I'm in the Truman Show and uh, that I'm going to wake up, you know, and, and nothing oh, nothing is real and something like that, you know. Um, the Truman Show, and thank you uh, for uh, the wonderful people who comment uh, and email me talking about the Truman Show that you know, say something about the Truman Show. Yes, the Truman Show, <laughs> Paul said it, and the Truman Show is the biggest psyop in movies, like fictional psyop. Like, um, if that isn't a psyop, uh, I don't know what that is. I mean, it's like this huge experiment on this person, which is Truman, okay? And why... Did Paul mention the Truman Show? Is this a psyop? Because when, when we speak and we are in front of a camera, we are, I mean, if you're not used to being in front of a camera as much, we, we, we may, might be under duress, uh, some, some certain amount of duress, so we're going to, like, be nervous. And Paul was quite nervous, I think, and... He, he's going to say things, things are going to pop up, you know, and he's going to say things that in the moment it's like, okay, yeah, the Truman Show, like, yeah, because it's all an illusion and it seems like a dream, yeah, like, like it's not real. But then you think, come on, hold on a second. The Truman Show is like, it's about a psyop. It's a psychological operation on the public, uh, the public who are watching the, this reality show, and it's a psyop operation on Truman. Okay? And it's a huge... It's, I mean, I'm not saying that's possible, because it is fiction. But it's interesting that Paul... Because, I mean, in the Truman show, everybody is on it. It's in on it. All the village... Um, all the everyone from her, his wife, his friends, even his fucking best friends is a fucking psyop. <laughs> He's a fucking crisis actor, you know. Everybody are actors, and this guy Truman has been used 
as a pawn in their game. And why did they, they did it to sell like a reality show to, may I say, very deranged people, like the public are deranged enough to consume this trash, which is the Truman Show. And, you know, the innocent person here, of course, is, tr is Truman. And But why, Paul, when does he say the Truman Show? It doesn't make sense. Is he Truman? Does he think that everybody is in on it? That, does he, that's Paul think that does he subconscious, subconsciously think that this was all a psyop? Because he said that he was really surprised that he, she had disappeared, that she vanished into thin air, and he said she's not in the river. She didn't believe. He didn't believe, or he acted as he didn't believe at all that Nicola was in the river. He totally believed that she was somewhere else. You know, so it's like Truman Show. It's like did Paul think that this is all a psyop, and they are all in on it, and he's Truman. He's the one who is being uh, duped. I mean, <clears throat> it's such a weird choice of words. So if he was guilty, if he is involved, the Truman Show reference popped out in his mouth as a, a subconscious thing, you know, it's like I don't think he, he, he wanted to say, say that. I don't think he even realized that he said that. He just subconsciously, it, the subconscious wanted to, you know, say it, say it, say the Truman Show, you know, because this is all a psyop. <coughs> and, you know, all the other things he said, it's like, oh God, so red flaggy. But I mean, it could be an explanation. It could be like he's, uh, He's just nervous and he's just, you know, <laughs> other things. Like, he's kind of like, maybe he's just, I don't know, he's a simple person and maybe he is clueless. I mean, definitely there was, you know, police going to their house. There were arguments, definitely. He's being, obviously, I think he's being um, shady, but I wonder if he's being shady. Maybe he's being shady for other things wrong he's done, but not because he killed Nicola. Or maybe he's being shady because he's involved in something, but he didn't actually harm her. Maybe he was, maybe she did an alive herself. But he was the one who pushed her to the edge, you see, and he will be, like, he will be guilty of that, you know, of pushing somebody, someone to the, to the edge. But does that make him a murderer? You know, that is why I think you, you shouldn't, people shouldn't, like, accuse someone, someone, like, like, just, you know, like that, in their face, like, all the time, you know, you're the murderer, you're a murderer. Um, I don't think that that's right, because there are many explanations. And the psyop is one of them. I mean, if you really think about it, why did Paul say um, The Truman Show, which is a, a, a movie about a huge psyop? Why? And somebody says, uh, yes, they noted um, that, <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 director of the movie is Peter Wire. Is it how how do you spell it? Wire, weir, and it's like what wire, weir. You know, you have the river river wire, and you have the weir, which is the the concrete thing in the river which they say Nicola went over as, as, as she was, you know, floating down the river or whatever, and she went over the weir, uh, which is, for me, is not what happened. And Peter Weir, 
That's so strange, isn't it? Peter Weir. I think it's Weir. You, you pronounce it Weir. Correct me if I'm wrong. English is not my first language, so Weir. W E I R. Weir. I mean, the Weir. Like the Weir in the wire. Again, Weir. Like a floating body. Like It's like it reinforces the official narrative that she just fell there and floated down and then just surf surfaced and floated down over the weir which you know experts said that that's not possible they would have found her before and I agree with that but these like subliminal messages keep pushing that the official narrative that oh no no she fell in the river and she drowned or whatever for whatever reason and she went out over the weir in the wire, you know, and then landed 23 years, days later, later, she landed on that tree. <clears throat> you know, it's all very strange if you ask me. I mean, even the most rational mind, quote unquote rational mind, has to say, okay, you know, this is poetic at least, this is like subliminal. This is interesting. This is, you know, strange. What a bit of a coincidence, right? So, yeah, Peter Weir, the director of The Truman Show, which is <clears throat> Paul's film. <laughs> and then don't get me started on the Paul thing and the Penny and the Beatles uh, references. It's like, oh, dear. I mean, I have talked about... Uh, like, you know, when, you know, lateral thinking with keywords, when, you know, you get a, a word that is re repeated a lot in the narrative and you pick it up and, and you say, okay, what does this word, what what is this word tells me subliminally, okay? So I spoke about the word dream, the roller coaster, uh, the willow. Yeah, among many, okay. But uh, yeah, there are all these Beatles connections as well, you know, like Penny, like Penny Lane, and Paul, you know, Paul is like Paul, you know, Paul is dead, and it's like this huge, um, well, ridiculous for me, but it was a, it's a conspiracy theory that <laughs> Paul is dead, you know. Um, you know, it's just like these weird links you make in your mind, you know, like, yeah, and it comes all it's subliminal, it's like under the surface, you know, it's like intuitive. But they give you, you know, they, they broaden your view and you can find new avenues of, you know, of investigation because you think of other things, you know, you, you just don't um, accept the official narrative just because it's there, especially in a budget investigation like this one where Everyone is dodgy from the police to the family to the village, you know, to the, you know, the, 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 the media. It's like so dodgy everything. Um, it's like when something is ambiguous, something is dodgy, I'm not going to accept the official narrative. I'm not going to because it's it's too suspicious, you know. So, yeah. And um, so I definitely think that there was something wrong with them uh, in the family, you know, in the in the in the couple, you know, the relationship between Paul and um, Nicola. There were definitely problems, and and just 17 days later, later she's disappeared. You know, she's gone, gone girl. Gone Girl, another psyop. Uh, I know it's a movie, but it, I think it, there was the real Gone Girl. There's there's a true crime uh, episode where it's called the True Gone Girl, and you know I like the movie because it's another psyop, but it's a psyop by this girl. I mean nobody else it's in on it. Where there are some shady characters that are in on it with her, but she's the mastermind. And she dupes everybody into thinking that she had been abducted or and she had been raped and yeah, it's terrible. 
and in the end she was fine and you know and it was all a manipulation and the husband you know she knew what she had done but he was uh he ended up being entrapped by her because if he left her she would like reveal something about him or something i mean I love that movie and Gone Girl, you know, Gone Girl, and um, I mean, definitely something happened there uh, with all the arguments and the police intervening. Something definitely happened there uh, that contributed to the um, conclusion that Nicola went missing, and then she sadly, you know, was found deceased and uh, but none of it makes sense because the data doesn't compute right so I've been at this for like one hour 20 minutes oh my god um, um, I hope this, this was was you know, kind of like a general thing. Um, I think you have to look into the possible cover-up by higher-ups. You know, I think it's a it's a probable probable avenue of investigation for all us um, detectives, like <laughs> unofficial detectives. Um, I think it's worth looking into other possibilities, you know. Not, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, stop uh, believing what you believe, but, you know, think about other things. This could be part of something bigger, okay? And it definitely can be a cover-up. Yep. Uh, it could not be. Maybe it's just like a vulgar domestic, you know. Could be that. Yes, but you know, seeing at all the other characters in the play, mm, all the other red red flags apart from Paul and Emma, it's like, hmm, yeah, it doesn't compute. So well, um, thank you again. I have to sign off now. Um, I'm thinking about, I wish I could do a live chat with you guys, but um, I can't transmit, I can't broadcast from my phone because I haven't got a hundred subscribers yet, which is <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you want to su subscribe, do it um, so I can reach that number so I can make the live. Because if I, if I made the live, it will be easier because I don't have to like edit this, upload it, put the thing, you know, it's just much easier if I did a live but we will see you know I need to get more subscribers for that I need to get some equipment for that because to do a live chat a live uh, stream on YouTube you need to a minimum of equipment to do to do it properly okay and uh, I wanted to thank again all the people who kindly kindly commented uh, on my videos they have very interesting information um, I wanted to say hello to Penny, Penny Bunny. <laughs> um, um, I, I haven't seen her. I, I think I saw one video once. Um, because, you know, I like to investigate by myself because so I, I'm not confused by all the information from other people. So I may look at one or two videos and then I just go my way. But... Penny Bunny, I, I like her because she's open-minded and she's a proper lady. She doesn't uh, attack people just because, you know, just to get views. She's, you know, she's just doing her own thing. Um, you know, she's, she's, she's fine. And um, I wanted to thank again Martin for his kind words and encouragement and for everybody who has encouraged me. Uh, saying, you know, yes, keep doing this, I like your points of view, and all of that. And um, the other one is, oh, she wants to remain um, anonymous, so I cannot say her name, but yes, um, <laughs> it's a girl, you know, and she is investigating this case as well with the crime maps, 
I think, and um, she is quite good as well. So, you know, I like that there are different minds, you know, who are doing this, and they are not, you know, they are not like media whores, okay? They are, they are, you know, kind of like proper, you know, gentlemen, proper ladies doing this. So, yeah. Um, and um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. You know, thank you for everything. And keep writing to me at uh, greetyastro at gmail.com if you want to be anonymous and you want to discuss anything, you know, reach me by mail. And if you want to um, support my channel uh, financially, um, I have left the link for the coffee.com. You can, if you wish to do so, you can do it that way. And, you know, uh, it's great, you know, this dialogue that has uh, opened up. Because I never thought, you know, that because I'm so far away from, you know, this, you know, from UK, you know, I, I never thought people would be like, you know, be connected to me in that way. So it's it's great, you know, and I, I'm, I really enjoy talking about these things and many other things. And so, yeah, um, so that's it. It's been one hour and 26 minutes, always so almost one hour and a half. It's been the longest for me. So, oh, my God. Um, I need some like water, like tea with <laughs> with honey for my throat. Um, yeah. So um, thank you guys, and hopefully I will bring something else to you tomorrow. Hopefully, I cannot promise because you know it's very difficult to you know not only to make the time, not so much as to make the time, but then to you know upload the thing to my computer download it you know edit it like put the thumb make the thumbnail you know upload it to youtube put everything blah 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 it's you know it's, it's quite time time consume, consuming actually uh so yeah let's let's uh see you know i hope hopefully i will be able to <clears throat> to be able to make a proper uh live stream uh with you know with a good mic and you know just like a good camera or whatever and um because I want to do it proper I, I don't want to do it like um you know like when you cannot see me writing it's low quality and the, the the audio is shit you know I want to have a proper mic and all that so let's see I mean I'm looking into it okay so um I'm sure that now it's like six seven eight it's 11, it must be like 11.20 there, like 11.20 in the uh, p.m. in UK. So here's like 6.17 6, <coughs> 17 p.m. Um, I think we, you are five hours ahead of me. Yep, I think so. So um, I'm going to sign off now. And have a great, great night or day if you are somewhere, somewhere else um, or afternoon or whatever. <laughs> like Truman said again, if I don't see you, have a good afternoon, good evening and a good night. <laughs> so, yes, uh, God bless you all and um, talk to you soon. Bye.